Ah, uh, the USA. We are always different, aren't we? We have our basically freedom units, our imperial system, and, uh, well, the rest of the world laughs in metric and says, why don't you guys use metric? You guys are so weird. You're the only people in the world that don't do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, actually, from what I've heard, there are a few countries that don't use metric like us, uh, but I want to also fight that point real quick before we even get started. Many people have told me to check out some videos on this topic, and there's a lot of them that cover this. So I'm just going to pick this one. I feel like that should explain it well. Keep in mind, uh, the U.S. does use metric for a lot of things, a lot more than I think most Americans realize, and a hell of a lot more than most people across the pond realize uh, when they make fun of us. Uh, for not using metric, I think you guys should know we use metric for a lot of things. It is definitely present here. Things that come to mind from this random American guy's perspective is, first of all, our, our tools working on cars here, working on all American Dodge Rams and Chevys and Fords. Guess what? Our American cars, uh, well, they're all metric sizes if you want to grab a tool and work on it. Most of the car is metric. Not to mention things that we interact with every day. Uh, our nutrition labels on our food is in metric. Our beverages, like a two liter of Coke or even wine that you want to purchase, it's going to be in metric. Not to mention prescriptions, medicine, metric, drugs. Yeah, we're talking street drugs, metric. <laughs> um, let's see, one of the most famous entities in the U.S., NASA. I do know for a fact that NASA uses metric. Without rambling on really far, uh, you get the idea. We do have metric present here, okay? And as much as I actually don't mind metric at all personally, I also don't mind our system we have here. It kind of involves a little bit of both. But we're going to look at a video called, Is a Metric System Actually Better? This is from a channel called Real Engineering. And like I said, uh, this whole topic has been suggested by many, many people. So I don't really know who to thank in this instance. But uh, yeah, if you would like to check this original video out in its entirety, it would be linked in the description down below. So you can do that uninterrupted. Here we go. Time that's has uh, finally let's arrived. Right into it. The comment section demanding imperial and metric units has gone on too long. <laughs> there can only be one measurement system. The British imperial system, like everything British, is based on antiquated units of measurement, like measuring your country's importance by counting the number of countries you have invaded and pillaged. A measurement that made sense 100 years ago, but Jeez. it's time to move on. Weirdly, the British have mostly moved on from this method of measurement, and it is instead Americans who insist on holding on to it. Yeah. Well, America, Liberia, and Myanmar, right. a prestigious trio. Now, I can already hear the people who refuse to wear masks in the comments. There are two kinds of countries, those that use the metric system and those that landed on the moon. You know who led the design team for the Saturn V? This guy. Listen to that deep Alabama accent. This weight dictates the amount of fuel and the numbers of motors an American, through and through, <laughs> ignore this photo Not of quite. him. Those are just some German friends he made while on gap year in Europe. Right. Look at all his friends. I'm friends. <laughs> A popular man. This Alabama native used metric. In fact, he despised British units. So much so that he designed a rocket during his gap year to fly to England to show them how great the metric system was. <laughs> the Saturn V was designed, like nearly everything in NASA at the time, with a mixture of both metric and imperial units. Right. Just read the mission reports for Apollo 11 for proof of this. It switches between inches and centimeters constantly. Oh my God, that's funny. It's a mess. Anyone working- I told you, yes. I have heard many times that NASA does use metric for a lot of other things and clearly actually uses a, a mixture. And that seems to be a common theme. Uh, a lot of engineering jobs, not even at NASA here, a lot of engineering jobs, uh, a lot of just jobs uh, or careers in the scientific field, you have to realize even on U.S. soil are going to involve metric. So I just kind of laugh. You got to have fun with this. You got to laugh when foreigners say, oh, my God, you guys need to get with it and, and use metric. What are you guys doing? We do use metric. <laughs> with this report, we use metric way more than you think. But of course, we do it in a different way and don't necessarily rely on metric the same way as you would over in somewhere in Europe. Hyper aware of it's what unit of measurement they were using. 
most of the design and science work was done in metric, before being converted to Imperial for the manufacturing and operational staff. One right. of the most mind-boggling examples of this is the guidance computer. It now, I'll admit this part is a little frustrating, a little goofy. It's a little goofy, uh, to put it nicely. <laughs> the fact that there's a lot of conversions done. So a lot of things might end up starting in metric, then being converted for a certain reason uh, to imperial, and then uh, after a while converted back to metric for another reason. So you have conversions going on, and that ends up being kind of a waste. This right? it's kind was of coded weird. in metric. Meters and kilograms are the language of science. But to ensure the astronauts could intuitively understand what those calculations meant, the displays inside the lunar module had to be displayed in British Imperial units. Mm, so, even back then, when computer power was extremely limited, the engineers had to waste precious computational time and power to conversion. Okay. And this isn't just a waste of computation power. Errors in conversion have led to an insane number of accidents through the years. Right. Some of That's the most notable being in NASA. In December 1998, the Mars Climate Orbiter took off from Cape Canaveral aboard its Delta II rocket. Over the course of its nine and a half month journey, the orbiter needed to complete trajectory correction maneuvers to bring it into an optimal orbit insertion altitude of 226 kilometers. However, as the time grew closer, calculations showed that the orbiter was entering Mars orbit in a far lower altitude, uh -oh. so low that it was likely going to strike the atmosphere and violently tear itself apart. Oh no. <laughs> this is exactly what happened. So, what went wrong? The orbiter was coded with metric units, so the thruster control unit was working with the metric unit for impulse, newton seconds, but the controller was being supplied with pound force seconds, oh, which geez. differs by a conversion factor of 4.45. A massive discrepancy. Yeah. A discrepancy that destroyed a 300 a $28 million project. Jeez. In 1983, an Air Canada flight departing from Montreal ran out of fuel halfway to its destination oh, no. in Edmonton. Why? The ground crew knew 22,500 kilograms of fuel was needed for the flight. They, however, needed to calculate how many liters were needed to be pumped. So, they used the density ratio to convert the weight measurement to a volume measurement, but they used the 1.77 density ratio which was pounds per liter, instead of the correct ratio of oh, 0 0.8 no. kilograms per liter, resulting in less than half the required fuel load oh, being oh, pumped geez. aboard. Luckily, the pilot managed to glide the plane down to an abandoned airfield, but that little boo-boo of a conversion error could have resulted in a catastrophic loss of life. These are two cautionary tales with disastrous consequences sets out when they are forced to work with both units. It's just an unnecessary pain in the ass we yeah. could all do without. Yeah. This is the reason we need to choose one measurement system. Mixing units not only is tempting fate with conversion errors, but it costs an untold number of hours for scientists and engineers around the world, banging their head against tables. Now, this is a good point. Uh, this is where I would differ from someone that he is speaking about here. So, of course, if you're going to be in NASA or if you're going to be an, an engineer in any capacity, uh, working between both uh, units is going to get old. It's going to get annoying. It's uh, It can be dangerous. It it's, can be a pain. And, of course, you can end up getting conversions wrong and all these different things. And uh, just not, not good things happen. Whereas uh, someone who isn't an engineer and who has not worked for NASA... Uh, someone in more, uh, let's say, safer, low-key scenarios, uh, I think it's kind of fun to bounce between both. And sometimes, you know, I'm forced to interact with both. Uh, but it's never, um, I guess you could say, in a bad scenario where if I make a mistake, <laughs> an expensive uh, mistake is about to occur or an accident uh, dealing with NASA equipment or something, you know, if I don't get this right. So, I think you get my point there uh, on the ground uh, for low key regular scenarios. It's not that bad switching between them. Uh, but of course, when it be becomes a, a problem in engineering in NASA, all these these higher end uh, scenarios, then all of a sudden I agree. It's kind of bad. It's like, OK, we need to just pick one and stick to it. And uh, in that case, America 
or it more specifically in the United States, needs to go metric. I think that would be smart on this kind of level. Agreed. When they could be using that time for something more productive, we need to really hammer home why metric units are the superior units. So why is it better? Yeah, well, let's, hear. let's start with the fundamental unit of measurement. There are seven base units of measurement, and with these seven, we can measure everything in the universe. Language of the universe. So, let's see how the imperial system handles a very simple one, length. An inch is a standard unit of measurement for length in the imperial system. Right. Let's imagine a scenario. You are designing a railing for a one mile long bridge. You, as a skilled and knowledgeable engineer, know that two half inch bolts are more than enough to secure the railing down. The posts of the railing are six feet apart. All right, how many inches are there in a foot? 12. 12? So that's 72 inches. Every 72 inches we need two bolts, our bridge is one mile long. How many feet is that? I don't know off the top of my- Uh, feet in a mile would be 5,280. I feel like some people know that, but I guess not everyone would know that. I only know that because, uh, again, it's kind of interesting to know how many yards are in a mile, 1760, and how many feet are in a mile, 5,280. And then, of course, a quarter mile used for- I'm a car guy, so drag racing. Uh, I think you guys probably heard 1320 before. It's a famous number, and it refers to a quarter mile, which is typically, uh, you know, a drag race. So My head and a quick Google search tells me it's 5,280 feet. What's 12 inches by 5,080? That's 63,360 inches. Divide that by 72, that's 880. So we need to order 1,760 half inches bolts that felt cumbersome yeah now when he when he <laughs> when he points it out there after a while yeah that that becomes a long that that becomes a long equation right and you're dealing with a lot of random numbers and yeah i agree why do i need I to remember all bizarre. these numbers because imperial <laughs> is a convoluted mess of measurement units invented by people who married their cousins that's why. Oh my God. <laughs> now, let's see how much easier that is in metric. Let's see. How many millimeters are there in a meter? It's in the name. Milli. Milli. 1,000. Which means 1,000. Now, how many meters are there in a kilometer? Once again, it's in the damn name. 1,000. Kilo, 1,000. Given a measurement in kilometers but want meters, just shift the decimal place over three places. No that's, calculation needed. That's pretty cool. No calculation needed. Move that decimal over. There you go. Needed. I do there like no that. room for error. It's a like simply that. better system. The foot is legally <laughs> defined as 0.3048 meters. The pound is legally defined by 0.435 kilograms. Why? Because the metric system is run by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, a neutral international organization whose sole mission is to create a global language of science who America is a member of and they have succeeded in an awe-inspiring way. In 2019, the final metric base unit, the kilogram, stopped being defined by human artifacts and is now, like all other metric units, defined by the laws of physics. In 2019, it ceased being defined by this hunk of metal and right. began being defined by Planck's constant, okay. which is defined as 6.626 by 10 to the minus 34 kilogram meter squared per second. Of course, to use this as a definition, we need ways to define the meter and second. The meter is defined as the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum in 1 divided by 299,792,458 of a second. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, how do we define a second? <laughs> a second is defined by the hyperfine transition frequency, which is the frequency of radiation which will cause an electron to jump from two closely spaced low energy states in a cesium-133 atom. Each of the base units are defined like this, using the unchanging language of the universe as its yardstick, or should I say, meter stick. Right. It's a beautiful and inspiring language that transcends the realm of humans, and for that reason alone, you should strive to use the metric Points. system. It yeah. got really Understand? heavy there at the end, and uh, I am not a master, you know, engineer or anything, so I may not retain every uh, little calculation he said right at the end there. Uh, but you know what? I will agree. I will agree that. Uh
it's just simpler. It's just more straightforward and, uh, quite frankly, more foolproof uh, using the metric system. I agree, okay? I think on a super professional engineering level, I believe America should just make the plunge and work their way towards using metric full-time, right? Now, I understand that the whole country as a whole, down to every single you know, aspect of everything, switching to metric is a little unrealistic. It would take a very long time and cost a lot of money. And uh, I understand that there are you know, problems with that, saying that on a broad sense. Uh, but you know, people learning metric just uh, to uh, you know, gain some knowledge to help them a little bit. And uh, because I feel like everyone should always want to learn, should always want to be open-minded, and it doesn't really hurt to have uh, more knowledge, does it? So yeah, I think the average American should learn metric and maybe research it, embrace it a little more. I know I definitely don't have a problem with it. I, I, like I said, I'm kind of weird. I do like kind of bouncing between both. But I, like I said, in conclusion, in the professional world, when it comes to engineering, NASA, and um, things like this, America should be aligned with, you know, so to say, you know, everyone else, right? <laughs> and uh, metric would just work so much better in a lot of industries. But uh, tell me your experiences down below. Which do you prefer? And uh, is a metric system actually that much better? I mean, it's pretty hard to argue against it, but uh, I, I'm still going to ask you guys what you think. Have you found out something, you know, over the years uh, in regards to the metric system having some sort of a presence in the United States? I think a lot of people think it has literally no presence, and uh, that's just not true. Anyway, I did skip around a little bit, so if you would like to watch this whole video uninterrupted, of course, you can use that uh, link in the description down below so you can check them out. And of course, uh, throw a thumbs up, a like on this video if you learned something new, if you found this entertaining. I certainly hope you did. And of course, you can subscribe to this channel uh, to become part of one of the best communities on, on YouTube, quite frankly, if I can learn how to talk. With that being said, guys, my name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, I'll catch you later.